Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon and welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host Ahmed Nawaz with the latest roundup of sports today. Let's take a look at what we're discussing. First of all, we have to just, I think, not just applaud but salute uh, this Pakistan men's hockey team. It's an absolute joyous moment for the entire nation. After 13 years, Pakistan has qualified for the final of the Aslan Shah Hockey Cup tournament 2024. In their final group game against New Zealand, uh, they were held to a one-all draw. Of course, New Zealand got the first goal in the last 10 minutes of the third quarter, and then Pakistan equalized. It was an absolute superb effort. Congratulations to the entire team. I think uh, if you look at throughout this course uh, of, of their tournament so far, they've been unbeaten. They've, uh, you know... Uh, have won three games, uh, two matches have been uh, drawn, but they've been absolutely superb. Clinical performance and even, I think if I talk about today's game, I watched uh, majority of the game, the possession and the way they were, you know, the, the synergy between the team was absolutely brilliant. I think I really enjoyed hockey after a while now. So I think it's a great moment for Pakistan. Just a short while ago, uh, we had uh, uh, government representatives as well, including the Honorable Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Mr. Ataur Latarar, uh, followed by the Head of Prime Minister's uh, Youth Development and Sports Program, Rana Mashood, as well. Uh, they also uh, applauded the team for their efforts. They uh, congratulated them on reaching the final after 13 years. They congratulated their families, their coaches, the entire team management. They also said that it's going to be a great omen now that uh, the final will be witnessed by the entire nation, courtesy of PTV Sports. And it was also announced that the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Shahbaz Sharif, has also congratulated the team and applauded the performance and we're all very hopeful uh, for great results uh, once they uh, re, you know take part in the final against Japan I think all in all uh, all we can say is that we're very very proud this national sport this national team uh, you know deserves a lot of attention more than other sports in this country I think one of the reasons why the glory of hockey has been lost in Pakistan is because we've not you know, treated it as a national sport. So I must applaud, I think, the government of Pakistan at this moment as well. This is a great initiative that they were on video link with the team as well. They interacted with them uh, via video link live. And, you know, it was, I think it's a great precedent that you acknowledge their, uh, their efforts. And also, I think uh, later on, we'll also see some financial incentives for them as well. Because unfortunately, you know, it's a struggle as far as the finances are concerned in hockey. So I'm sure that this will also be improved. So once again, congratulations to the Pakistan hockey team. And at the same time, congratulations to the government of Pakistan for acknowledging their services as well. Uh, then, of course, you move on and we discuss cricket in detail. Uh, Pakistan is all set to face Ireland in the three-match T20 international series that starts from today. Uh, the trophy has been unveiled as well. We'll discuss all the combinations. What is Pakistan's probable playing 11? What kind of cricket they should be going for? What should be the setup as well? We'll discuss all of this in detail. Uh, we will, of course, I think, uh, be moving on to the entire scenario as well where Pakistan's World Cup preparation. I'll introduce the guest in studios. Joining us, first of all, is uh, somebody who happens to be a cricket commentator and international broadcaster presenter and our sports expert, Kiasif Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, sir? Wa alaikum assalam, Ahmed. I'm very well, thank We've you. We've also been joined by sports anchor and he's an expert as well. He's also a coach when it comes to sports, Sayyid Mohammed Awais. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum assalam, Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. And we've also been joined uh, by a former Olympian and member of the Pakistan hockey team, Mr. Imran Butt as well. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you? Right. So I said, like, you know, when we discuss this entire scenario, it's very important that you gauge Pakistan's entire performance throughout the tournament, how the matches have proceeded, how they've, you know, uh, stepped up towards reaching the final. We've got a report by Sabah. Let's take a look at that and then we come back. Pakistan match against New Zealand ended in a 1-1 draw in the ongoing Sultan Aslan Shah Hockey Cup 2024 at Ipoh, Malaysia. In the third quarter of the match, Luke Holmes gave New Zealand the lead through a field goal. Eight minutes later, Abu Bakr Mahmood scored on a penalty corner to equalize for Pakistan. Pakistan team remained unbeaten in the group stage. Pakistan has so far played five matches in the mega event. They beat Malaysia, Korea and Canada and drew their matches against New Zealand and Japan. Pakistan is at the top of the points table in the tournament with three wins in five games. Green shirts have now qualified for the final of the event for the first time in 13 years. This is Pakistan. Pakistan team's first assignment under the newly appointed Dutch coach Rulent Altmans. The final match will be played between Pakistan and Japan on 11th of May. 
And there you have it. All you need to know about uh, the Sultan Islam Shah <coughs> Hockey Tournament 2024 and Pakistan's campaign <coughs> so far in this report, courtesy of Sabah. They've reached the final now. They'll be facing Japan. It was an interesting encounter. They, you know, beat majority of the teams. Two matches were held to a draw, but Pakistan were absolutely superb. They drew against Japan and New Zealand. Otherwise, they beat Canada. They beat Korea as well in this tournament. They were absolutely superb. As I just highlighted, that their performance was really spot on. So we'll discuss all about this uh, this in detail. And you know, once you move into the final then you know it becomes a game of nerves as well so i think all of this will be on the show uh, i think uh, we'll just go to imran once again imran assalamu alaikum can you hear me yeah yes i hear you how are thank you? you very much thank you very much for joining us uh, imran uh, how would you highlight uh, today's performance especially like i said they were one goal down in the third quarter but made a remarkable comeback and now leading it into the final yeah just uh, i'm very happy uh, about the performance of my team especially the pakistan team played a very well in this last and all credit goes to our team players and they played very well and and some 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 issues in the starting of the game because Pakistan is slow start in the game that's why they score the other team score against Pakistan in the final especially Pakistan the proactive the start of the game if we want to survive against Japan because Japan in the first two quarters they or they all the time create a pressure on the defense so Pakistan need to proactive in the start of the final. Uh, Imran, going into uh, the final now, once they move on, like I said, that even if you're unbeaten in the tournament, once you reach the final, it becomes a different game now. It's not just about the hockey that you'll be playing, it's a game of nerves as well. You've got to consider, and Pakistan already has reached the final after 13 years. Uh, what kind of strategy do you think they should be going with now? Um, I definitely, Roland Oldman has known about the nerves of Japan, and Pakistani players are much experienced side. Because they all are playing from the 2018 to 2024, so I'm very hopeful to my team to the, uh, if you want to survive in the final against Japan, because uh, you know the ball possession is a very important. Uh, Pakistan against the Japan, we need to be a ball possession and create some short corners. Because if we create some short corners, so we have uh, uh, we have this opportunity. Because we need to score earliest against Japan, because Japan always suffers from the short corners. Well, uh, now, uh, once, you know, we talk about the team as well, just recently we had uh, uh, members from the federal government interacting with them via video link. Uh, as a former hockey player yourself, uh, like I said, that we have seen uh, certain uh, setbacks in hockey in Pakistan, unfortunately, due to infrastructure development or whatever course we can say. How important is it for any player once they're acknowledged by the government? They were just, like I said, uh, uh, about five, ten minutes ago, they had a live interaction with members of the federal government who also gave them the best wishes of the prime minister. How important is it for this team that they are recognized at this moment and they are supported in all ways possible? Yeah, this is a great step from the Pakistan government. They support the players. They interact in the video link. That we are very important before the final start because we need to boost up our players because there is no daily allowance clear for the players. I request to the government kindly please clear the allowances for the players because they are fighting for the Pakistan without facilities, without allowances. And we are playing a final in the launch after 13 years. So Pakistan hockey is 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 now is now on track. I know I know we need some time, but but we need to support our players. They play for the Pakistan. Uh, Imran, what would you suggest? As you also mentioned that we need some time now. Uh, let's hope for the best in the final after the results of the final come in. Uh, in any case, the uh, team would be welcomed as heroes, as champions. Uh, like we say that the system needs some consistency. Oldsman needs to be given some time as well. What would you recommend is the right way forward now for pa Pakistan hockey? Because we certainly should not look back but move forward. Yeah, we definitely will look forward because we have a very important tournament in the next in, in this month, in the last of this month, Nation Cup. The Nation Cup is very important for us because we need to qualify for the Pro League because we want to the matches against the European teams. If we want to survive in the international hockey, if we want to survive in world hockey, especially if you want to give some experience from your players, so you need to qualify for the Pro League. And Pro League is a very important for us because France, Austria, Pakistan, Canada, Malaysia, Korea, they all team, they, they, these teams are in the nation. So I hope this, this Lancia tournament give more confidence to the players to play in the nation and Pakistan put, in, put, put input in the World League. So it's very important if you want to survive your hockey because then if you play in the Pro League, then you have better than better in, in a days. And now you can be back for the Pakistan hockey, will be back on track and for the World Cup and Olympics qualify. Certainly, certainly they will be. Man, thank you very much for joining us on Sports Extra.
Right, that was former Olympian and hockey player uh, for Pakistan, Imran. But I think very pertinent things mentioned by him as well. But like I said, I think uh, mostly we can say that it's a joyous occasion for Pakistan. Uh, Sayyid Mohammed Awais, you just recently had an interaction before the team left for uh, this tournament uh, with the coach and the management as well. Obviously, Oldsman's first assignment right now. He's been with the team before as well. And we had results in the past, but this was his first assignment as he's come back. Uh, how do you feel about this? You know, as somebody who's associated with sports, a national game now, and what does it mean for these players now who have qualified for a final after 13 years? Uh, first of all, congratulations, Ahmed Bey, from on behalf of PTV and on behalf of us, I mean, to the nation and to the hockey team that they have qualified for the finals. Uh, one thing, it was really hot uh, welcoming to see that a person who does not even watch hockey, I mean, they were quietly interested to watch the Pakistan hockey team today. I mean, it was live telecast, everyone was watching that Pakistan match. Uh, we just recently played and everyone was excited to watch Pakistan now versus Japan in the finals. Uh, having Altsman's interview, one thing I just, uh, when, when, I, when I was speaking to him, he was uh, very excited to coach the Pakistan team. But one thing again, it's a request that the thing we, we want the hockey to be, it's, it's a national game and we want the hockey to be in the right directions. You need to give the time to the coach. I mean, you need to give time so that he can prolong with the, with the team and you can get more results from there. He, wo he more focused on the youngsters. Uh, coming up for the Pakistan team and I remember when I asked him, I said, how important is the Aslan Shah hockey tournament? He said, it is very important to get your rhythm back, but my eyes is on the nation's tournament. I want to win it to qualify for the pro league, which is really important for the development of, of the players. And mm -hmm. hats off, I always say mm -hmm. one thing, Ahmed Bhai, with not much resources, mm -hmm. these lads have really done a lot for Pakistan. The way they have performed, especially in the match against a, a pressure match, I would say against Malaysia, they were Three down, if you remember, they came back very strong in the second half against Korea. I've never seen in in recent past, I would say, Pakistan beat Korea 4-0. And if you just remember, the match against uh, Japan was was one of the exciting matches. Went till the last moment, I would say. It was one of the heart, heart attack kind of a match. So, <laughs> it has been exciting thing for Pakistan hockey. And I appreciate the government officials uh, before, the, before the program. I mean, they, they congratulated the team. They were live on the Skype, I guess. They congratulated them and that's what they want. I mean, they want the government of Pakistan, they want the people to back this, uh, the Pakistan hockey team. And hats off to Imran, but I would say the captain of hockey, he has gone through many ups and downs. I remember he wasn't the part of the hockey, ho hockey mm -hmm. team. Then he came back. That shows what an important player and an important coach can make a role Certainly. for the hockey team. Welcome back to Sports Extra. And now, of course, uh, we take your focus to cricket. Pakistan is all set to face Ireland today in the first T20 International three-match series. And the trophy has also been unveiled. Now, Pakistan's team selection and everything will be uh, put into uh, prospect as well. Well, Asif, I think all the talk now becomes uh, practical implementation. Like we said that you've got a number of games before the World Cup and it's now or never. Whatever playing 11, I think Pakistan go with in this series or definitely in the first two, three games that we talk about in the series as well is something that we might be seeing in the World Cup as well. Well, uh, I think even if you see Pakistan's pool, that Pakistan will be playing against India. And Pakistan have India, Canada, USA, Ireland. And um, so only one important game, in, in my eyes, that is against the India. Rest, uh, uh, when we talk about the T20 cricket, every team is dangerous. But Pakistan got now, uh, you know, a couple of very experienced players. And whenever we talk about the playing 11, Amir... Uh, uh, reached uh, this morning or maybe uh, late tonight, uh, yes, last night in Ireland be just because of his visa issue. So I have watched the uh, Azhar Mahmood's media talk. He is so much confident that we have given the, ro uh, the, the different roles to the players, uh, openers, in the middle order, spinners, fast bowlers. And if, and if they are coming up with the perfect execution, Pakistan will give tough time to the every opponent. Mm -hmm. So now come to the uh, Pakistan versus Ireland. I think that Ireland is a very good side. But recently when we have watched their T20 cricket against Afghanistan in, in Sharjah, that they were struggling especially against the spinners. So Pakistan have Imad Wasim, Shadab Khan, Abrar, three of the spinners. But I'm not sure that either we're going with the two specialist spinners or we're going with Imad or Shadab. I think that that would be uh, our choice and uh, when we talk about the conditions of Ireland, the paces like Naseem Shah, Shaheen Shah Afridi and uh, Haris Rauf, really crucial uh, role for them. 
And once again, lots of responsibility on the Babar Azam because uh, when the people, they talk about that uh, his strike rate, his strike rate, I think that now stop talking about his strike rate because we're putting extra pressure on him and that's it. And uh, we require his services if he's playing good innings, 60, 70 runs on just 40 deliveries, I think that would be okay. And on the other side, if the, the youngsters like Saim Ayub and uh, Usman Khan, this is the best chance, chance for them, play well, perform well and get permanent uh, chance in the Pakistan team. Because, you know, right after this, Pakistan will be playing World Cup and, and, and after 21st of May, Pakistan will announce the squad for the uh, World Cup. So if they won't be able to perform well, then Pakistan would have to think either they, they are going with Usman and Saim or they will bring some change. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I think that that needs to be settled right now. Yeah. Because <clears throat> as you move closer, it's going to be a very difficult decision, not only for the team combination, but I think it's also injustice to those players as well. So it's very important that you clarify right now who's in your plans and who's not for the World Cup. Also joining us now on Sports Extra is senior sports journalist Sayed Haider. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you? Assalamu alaikum, I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. So now the series begins okay. today and as Asif also mentioned, that you know you yep. need to finalize your combinations. It's about time now. You can't just linger on till the 22nd to announce that squad. Of course, you can formally make that announcement. But informally, the team needs to be sure and the batters and the bowlers need to be sure of their position in the team. How important is this series now? Oh, very important this series. I think uh, it's not, Ireland is not like uh, team uh, as in the past it was. Now, uh, you know, uh, in these days, Ireland has become uh, like a strong team other t uh, like other teams. So I think it's this series is very important. And uh, Barbara Azam is a captain. He has a chance to get some uh, results from the players, to get some uh, fitness test also of the players who will be the, uh, fit in the T20 World Cup in, in US and West Indies. So I think Barbara Azam should go with the team, which is, uh, which is going to the US and West Indies. Um, big experiments we don't need. We have done already so, something in New, against New Zealand series. So now uh, against Ireland and England, the coming uh, four T20 against England, they are very, very important for the Pakistan team before the mega event against India. Unfortunately, Pakistan uh, has not announced till Pakistan is caught, but all other teams they have they have announced already. So it's a last, I think it's a last opportunity for the selectors, for the Babar Azam to get the final squad for the T20 World Cup. But Pakistan should go with the full strength against Ireland and England and to test which player is really suitable for the uh, T20 World Cup. So Heather, if we talk about, uh, you know, priorities as a nation for Pakistan, I think most of the times we've discussed it, that, you know, our criticism should be constructive criticism. Unfortunately, exactly. what we fail to understand that our players are also human and whatever we say and whatever we, you know, the statement we make and when I say we, I mean the entire nation and including our former cricketers as well. Sometimes we need to also remember that the players are human and it affects them as well. Uh, gladly, I think the, on the positive side, we see that the skipper Babar Azam has developed a thick skin now. Uh, he doesn't, I think, uh, bother about s certain uh, statements that are absolutely irresponsible that are made against him or the team. Uh, so that is on a positive side. But at the same time, you know, be it former cricketers or cricket experts throughout Pakistan, uh, what would you advise as well? You know, that instead of just throwing baseless criticism on the team, what we need to remember that this is a World Cup year. This is your team that has been selected to represent Pakistan. Whether I like a player in the team or not, whether, you know, somebody else likes a player in the team or, or not, at the end of the day, we have to support Pakistan. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, the criticism, if it is constructive, then it's always good for anyone. Unfortunately, in our system in Pakistan, we have seen that in past uh, former cricketers, they have some favorite players in the team. And they are targeting all these other players, why they are there and uh, their favorite players, in uh, they are not in the team. This phenomenon has really disturbed uh, all the captains, not only the Babar Azam, in the past, Sir Faraz Ahmed or uh, Ms. Baulak, they, al they have complained always, Ms. Baulak especially he has complained uh, always that former cr cricketers, they are sitting on the uh, TV sets, uh, in TV channels and uh, in talk shows, they are just only criticizing the team, but they are not uh, taking the performance of the team, what they are doing. I think that constructive criticism is always a positive sign for anyone, but 
our former cricketers, they should not be very hard like uh, we have seen someone, I will not uh, name of the uh, former players, but someone on the TV channels, they are really doing what in a very bad manner. They are always targeting Babar Azam or Mohammad Rizwan or Shahin Shah Afridi. They try to get some uh, some uh, some differences uh, among the players. They are trying to uh, to build some differences among the players. I think it's not a good sign for the system. Former cricketers, they are uh, someone. They are not doing anything on the ground, but they they always they are speaking everything against and also the personal things they are they are speaking the friendship and the groups and everything. I think it's a normal. It is not only in the Pakistan the grouping the dressing room problems. They are always more than in pa Pakistan in other teams, India or Australia or other teams. So uh, we have to go with the team. We have to support them. Once the team has been selected, now it is an on touring. So we should support Babar Azam, all the players who are playing in the in the series. And we, we have to point out only the only the errors of the team. But we should not go against like the personal things. And this, if if we will not do it, then it means that we are not supporting our team, our nation, our country. Just we are we are trying to find out our some special assignments, our special wishes, and it is not good for anyone. Certainly, I think uh, you know it's very very important that at the end of the day we need to realize whatever we say, whatever we mean needs to be for the sake of constructive criticism only. Uh, personal animosity is really something that you need to shy away from, be professionals as well. Uh, Aves, uh, very important game this, as Asif also mentioned and as Hyderabad did mm -hmm. as well, that you know this is an important series. Ireland is one of the most improved teams right now. They've enjoyed a journey as well. Uh, if you talk about their performance across formats, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of improvement in various segments. And uh, it's a competitive series, but I think for not just the case of uh, numbers or results, but also that you right now need to develop a team for the World Cup and finalize it instead of, you know, delaying it as much as you can. I mean, the first of all, I mean, if I just watch the Pakistan team, Pakistan team is the only team which has more matches in going before the World Cup. They're playing more matches as compared to any other team you played against. Recently, you held a series, I mean, now you're going to play against Ireland, then you're going to play against England. And this series is very important for you because the right combination will be selected for you for the World Cup. And if I talk about the island conditions, you know, there are, you have got, uh, this. it's uh, most supportive for the fast bowlers because you got a little bit movement over there, you got grass, lively grass on the wicket. So it won't be an easy task for the batsmen to score runs over there if your fast bowlers actually will be doing a good job for the Pakistan team. And I rightly, uh, I would agree with both of them that you need to go with the full strength of Pakistan team because you're going to be testing your, your strength, which will be in your mind that that needs to be carried for the World Cup over here. But the biggest two things I would say, uh, you need to one thing realize, I mean, he's one of the best players of the world, whatever I mean, thing is, Babar Azam, but you, your team specifically, when you're playing a big tournament, it's a team game which wins you the tournaments. It's just not two players which you win, they win the tournament for you. They can win two to three matches, but they can't win you consecutively big tournaments. You need to get out of Babar and Rizwan era in sense that he's the one who will be 24 hours performing for you. You need to be a team unit over here. I wasn't in favor. I was speaking to even uh, you both off air that I wasn't in favor of getting Babar Azam and uh, Rizwan apartheid as an opening department. They were doing a superb job for you. The real problem for you is if you go by the Pakistan team selection, you have got seven to eight openers in the team outside the team. The biggest issue is your middle order where you have to score runs. I mean, you have to score in quick fire runs over there. Who's going to be taking that responsibility? That's the biggest issue for you. Secondly, if you talk about the uh, your, uh, your all-rounders, you have got Imad Vaseem, you have got uh, Shadab Khan with you, then spinner, you have got Ibrar with you, who's a genuine spinner for you, a guy who was performer, top performer of the Pakistan Super League, the, Lex, uh, the Osama Mir, you dropped him off. What was the reason? I don't know. If I speak about Haris, I know many of them might not agree, but when you're talking about the strike rate, he was the 30th number batsman in the world with the top strike rate, and you dropped him off. What was the reason? No one knows about that. The biggest thing, what I still feel is two things. One, your squad will be changed after the Island series, 120%. Looking at this squad, there will be mm -hmm. some changes. And lastly, why was Amir Jamal not included? I know many of them say he's 8-9 runs per over in T20. But the cushion what he gives in the batting, that's the main point what you need in the T20, quick fire runs, what he provides with you. Why was he not included in the side? There are literally many questions, but uh, this is a major series for Pakistan. Ireland is not an easy, easy option in Ireland. They'll really give you a tough time, but Pakistan needs to be proactive more 
needs to be aggressive over here. Certainly. The match, of course, takes place at the Clontarf Cricket Club in Dublin. And if you look at some of the stats, then only five T20 internationals have been played in this ground. And only one game has been won by batting first. Four games have been won by batting second. The average score, or uh, first of all, I think the highest total is something that you need to talk about, is 153. That was uh, between Ireland and Zimbabwe. And the lowest total was 114. That was also Ireland versus Zimbabwe. And if you talk about the average scores in this ground, batting first is 107, second is 108. So not many matches that have been played here, but certainly I think it's a good moment for Pakistan to go against the odds. So once I think I'd like them to bat first and set a good total. But obviously the captain would assess the conditions and we'll leave it at that. Action, of course, begins at 7 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. And hopefully it's not just the results, but uh, it's finalizing a team for the World Cup as well. Now, before we go, uh, we've got something, uh, uh, you know, of a development on international cricket that we'd like to share with you as well. A New Zealand cricketer, Colin uh, Munro, uh, is also uh, in the news as well. You talk about this New Zealand squad, so we're going to be talking about them as well. So there's a lot to be said. And if I talk about, like, I, I always say that, you know, there are certain teams that you need to talk about in detail as well. And one of those teams when you talk about whichever ICC tournament you can, is New Zealand cricket team as well, alongside Pakistan for making it for the most amounts as well. But Colin Munro has announced his retirement from international cricket. He uh, played 57 ODIs and more than 60 T20 internationals, scoring three centuries in T20 international cricket. The T20 World Cup uh, would be his last assignment uh, in New Zealand colours. And of course, uh, I think uh, stellar career uh, comes to an end at the right moment as well. When you realise as a player that you, know, you have to hang up your jersey, then it's your decision. So 57 ODI, 65 T20s, one lone test match, uh, debuted in 2012. So it's been, a, like I said, a stellar career for Colin Munro. Congratulations to him, his family, his coaches, uh, Team New Zealand. And of course, you know, once they move on, uh, we wish them uh, the best of luck for the next phase of life as well. But like I said, that you always, uh, on a high note, if you're saying goodbye to cricket, and you're not being, you know, begged or forced to leave, then I think it's a good omen. We'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you very much, Kiyasi, for joining us. Thank you very much, Sayyid Mohammed Awais, for joining us. And thank you very much, uh, Sir Sayyid Haider, for joining us as well. That wraps up Sports Extra from me and my entire team. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.